Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. This one says, I'll answer this one. Go to Matthew 12. Now come to this. Sheesh, I didn't know we was going to get so many questions. I still want y'all to go over y'all, which I was going to go over though. But I'm going to answer some of them though. Got to. All right, Matthew 12. This one says, what is servile work? All right. Ah, we don't have our TVs up yet. Sheesh. Servile work. Anybody know? Uh, let me hear Aaron in the front right here. Oh, right behind you, Aaron. Shalom, shalom. Hey, shalom. A servile work is uh, when you are uh, doing work, um, a, a service to somebody that you're going to get uh, paid for. Or yeah, that's the key. Wages, wages. Servile work is something that you receive wages for. All right. Then it says, and can we clean... The house, do chores, and organize on the Sabbath day. Now, give me 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22 real quick. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22. All right. So this is a good question to get a better understanding because um, a lot of us struggle with this. So we can go over this a little bit. Uh, read what you got. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 22. Come on. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Right. So there's something called the day of what? When it pertains to the Sabbath. The day of what? Uh, not that day, but the day before. The day of. Yeah, the day of preparation, right? So read the scripture again. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Right. So let's just say. Your house is funky. Why is it funky? Because there's trash in it. Now, there's two situations. You could have been the brother or sister that was off that day, right? You slept. You did any and everything except prepare for the Sabbath. And now the trash is stinking up your house. Now, in that situation, yeah, that looks pretty what? Looks pretty evil. Because you could have easily did what? took out the trash, right? But then you got the brother or sister who may have to work all the way until 8 p.m. As soon as it was sundown, now you're home and your trash is stinking, but it's already sundown. So my question is, what are you going to do in that situation? Uh, let me hear and tell us. What are you going to do? Uh, shalom, leadership. Hey, shalom. Um, if you didn't have the opportunity to take the trash out, say, like you say, once the sun went down, um, tie the trash up, sit it outside the door. That's okay. what I would do. Or, or just take it out. Okay. Or just take it out. Or just take it out. Because it's yes, the same sir. thing, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, he scared me on that. I was like, okay, okay. Now people are like, well, I don't know. What does servile mean? What does it mean again? It, yeah, it means you're doing work for wages. Wages. Now. It goes on to say, clean house chores, organize on the Sabbath. Now, somebody's going to now say, if you could take out the garbage, that means I could do sit-ups. I could do push-ups. Who has a scripture for that? Let me see if you've been studying. Let me hear it out of the mouth of babes. What you got, Mordecai? Isaiah. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 58, verse 15 or 13. 13. There it is. Read that one. Isaiah 58, verse 13. Okay. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 13. Come on. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, 
from doing thy pleasure. From doing what? From doing thy pleasure. Pleasures. Doing your own thing. Doing something that could wait. Now, hold that. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 33, and verse, mm, is it 7 or something around there? Y'all know what I want. Yes. All right, sisters, make sure y'all flipping them pages over there. All right, Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 7. Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 7. Come on. Why does an one day... Let's try it again. Why doth one day excel another? All right. Does anybody know why one day would be better than the other or excel the other? Um, Yeshaya. Um, because if it's something that the Lord ordained to excel an one day, excel another, then that's what it is. Exactly. What's that called? Being what? Hollowed. Anybody have a precept for that? Yes, today is your day, brothers. I'm coming. I'm coming with it. I'm testing you. What is, what was the, what's the precept for hallow? Oh, here it is right here. Hey, hey, Ron, in the front. Oh, uh, the book of Le Leviticus, chapter 20, 23 and 6, I think. Oh, Leviticus. over there. 20 and 6. Okay. No, no, that ain't it. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. It's uh, Leviticus chapter 20, 26. Okay, all praise. I see you got confident once he said yeah. the book. <laughs> got real. Oh, I got that. Yeah, yeah, I got that. All right. Leviticus 20 and 26. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 26. Come on. Ye, excuse me. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy. And have severed you from other people that ye shall be mine. Right. So holy or hallowed means to what? Separate or sever. Okay, so let's go back to Sirach 33 and verse 7. Sirach chapter 33 and verse 7. Uh-huh. Why does one day excel another? When as all the light of every day and the year is of the sun. Right. So it says all the lighting, just like it says, was that the book of John? All days have 12 hours in it. Okay, read. By the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished. Right. By the knowledge of the Lord, the days were distinguished. All right. So let's go back to um, Isaiah 58 and 13. Isaiah chapter, chapter 58 and verse 13. Uh-huh. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure uh -huh. on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him not doing, excuse me, and shall honor him not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Right. So we're going to focus on ways. It says doing thine own ways. Okay. We shouldn't be doing our own ways. We should be doing his ways on that day. Meaning what? Studying, uh, doing the work, going to the streets, congregating. All right. So how do we know that? Hosea 14 and 9. Ways. Okay. The scripture is telling us exactly what to do on that day. Okay. And we're not done with the question. I'm just setting it up. Come on. Hosea chapter 14 and verse 9. Uh-huh. Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. So if you're wise, meaning what? You have an understanding of uh, God's commandments. You are going to understand these things. Read it again from the top. Verse 9. Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Prudent. And he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. It says what? For the ways of the Lord are right. Right. Not our ways, but God's ways. That's right. So we got to make sure we're aligned with God's ways on which day? Yeah. Not saying you can sin any other day. I'm just saying this day, it ain't like the rest. It's hollowed. It's separate. Now let's go to Matthew 12. Christ, he's going to show us how to keep the Sabbath under him. Okay. A lot of people, they try to use that... Um, 
Oh, let me show you. Let me clear up confusion. These are the basics, though, but we need to go over. Give me Exodus 16. Because a, uh, a lot of Israelites would use this. They have no under- but they don't have no understanding of what it's talking about. Exodus 16. <clears throat> First one? No. Okay. It's uh, 29. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 29. This is going into that example that me and Antelis was going over. All right, read this. See, for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Watch this. Abide ye every man in his place. Uh huh. Let no man go out from his place on the seventh day. Right. So, the what is they call the Orthodox Jews, which is the Jewish people, right? They say that you're not even allowed to lift anything. That's talking about carry a burden, but that's going into serve our work. Uh, that's going into. They also say that you can't leave your house. Who knows what that scripture is going into? Who knows? It should be like that. Simon. Uh, shalom, leadership. All right, so that's going into um, when um, the children of Israel was in the wilderness and uh, the Most High said that uh, he would, you know, give them a certain uh, part of the manna, you know what I'm saying, that they should gather daily. And for since the Sabbath was approaching, he said, I will send you enough for two days so you wouldn't have to go out on the seventh day and gather. Right, so it's not saying you can't leave your house, is it? Oh, no, sir. Right, it's not saying that. It's not saying that. So what does servile mean again? Well, right, you get wages from that work. So I don't want y'all to lose that mindset, all right? Now, give me Matthew 12. Christ is going to set the story straight, the record straight, excuse me. Matthew 12, start at verse 1. The book of Matthew Chapter 12 and verse 1. Come on. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the the corn, and his disciples were unhungered and began to pluck the ears of corn. So that sounds totally opposite of the commandment that we just read in Exodus 16, right? Does it sound similar or opposite? Ah, these brothers don't pay attention. What does it sound like? Sound opposite? Y'all say it sounds similar. What's similar about it, Eliezer? Uh, Christ and his disciples was pretty much outside walking in the field trying to gather food. Right. So it's the same situation going on in Exodus, right? But in this situation, is Christ stay in his house and not do nothing? Or what, what is he showing us here? I need Keep the mic up here, please. And tell us. It's showing that they, when they was traveling, that um, if they had to eat, that it was okay for them to gather food for them to eat or just pluck a piece of corn and not tear up the whole field or make it seem like you're doing work to get food, just pretty much just gathering or just plucking one and eating. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, let me hear what you got. Uh, they didn't. They didn't have uh, time to prep because they were traveling. So, th- so they had to. Uh, if they were going about, if they were hungry, they had to gather it to eat. They didn't. They didn't have time to gather it before the Sabbath. There you go. There you go. Was that in Proverbs four? All thy wisdom get an understanding. Is that verse six, seven, something like that? It's four or seven. All right. Read that real quick. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Because think about it. According to Surah 19 and 20, wisdom is the application of God's laws, right? We just read Exodus 16. But it says, with all thy wisdom, get an understa- uh, understanding. How do we get the proper understanding of the Bible? By what? Precept upon precept. Now give me Deuteronomy 23 and 25. All right, Deuteronomy 23 and 25. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 25. Come on. When thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor. Hmm. Now, Christ was where? Christ and his uh, disciples was where? In the cornfield, right? Read. 
Verse 25. Come on. When thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor, then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. It says a sickle. What no, who knows what a sickle is? Um, Stefan. Shalom leadership. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a harvesting tool. Uh, could you explain it for everybody oh. so they can like envision it? Yes, sir. It's a, a staff with a sharp uh, curved hook. That way you can cut down multiple things at one time. Does it take a lot of effort? Uh, a little bit, yes, sir. It takes. Well, you're swinging it pretty Yeah, hard. you're not just going to go like that. No, sir. No, 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 no. So that's going into that hard labor. Yes, sir. Okay. So it says not to do that when it comes to your neighbor's uh, goods. All right. Now go back to Matthew 12 and 1 real quick. Get more understanding on this. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 1. Come on. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungered and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Right. So Christ is showing us, okay, it's the Sabbath day. We're traveling. He's giving us an example that, hey, as long as you're doing the work, Certain things can change. And we're going to read down. Uh, Captain Zakar bring this out at Tabernacles, not on this question, but on a different question. Uh, going into the, uh, the Urim and the Thurim. Oh, yeah. Obi asked that question. Yeah, Obi asked that question. Uh, he said, how come Judah and Benjamin could use the Urim and Thurim? That was only for Levi. Well, if the Most High God says that King David and King Saul can use the Urim and Thurim, guess what? They can use it. So the same thing right here. Christ is showing us, which is the son of God. Hey, according to the, the rules that we had before, the laws that we had before, this would be wrong. But Christ came to show us that he's the Lord of the Sabbath. And things change, okay? Just setting it up. Let's read. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 1. Come on. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were in hunger. And began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Read. But when the Pharisees saw it. When who? When the Pharisees saw it. Right. Those would be the they waiting for you to violate the law, right? That's why Christ had to come and change a few things because of people like that. They worried about nitpicking rather than what? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Okay? Read. But when the Pharisees saw it, uh -huh. they said unto him, Come on. Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. What is he quoting? He's getting that from Exodus 16. Okay, read. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was unhungered and they that were with him? Uh-huh. So, How David, we're not going to go to it. First Samuel is the 21st chapter. David was running for his life. Who was trying to kill him? King Saul was trying to kill him. So he came to the temple. The priest was there with the, uh, with the, the showbread. Normally, no, no, no. That's for the who? The Levites. But in that situation, what was granted to him? He was able to eat of it because of a situation. Okay? Um, yeah, let me say this. What do we, were we here last week or the week before? Here in this building. No, we weren't here. So when we got this building, was it in Sabbath? It's still not in the Sabbath condition. But was it ready for the Sabbath yet? Absolutely not. So we had to do what? We had to get the Lord's house ready. Watch this. Give me the book of Haggai real quick, the first chapter. Watch this. Give me Haggai chapter 1 verse 4. And read down to seven. Oh, verse eight through eight, four through eight. Watch this. Oh, goodness. All right. You got it? Yes, sir. Okay. We appreciate you. Uh, chapter and verse. One and four. The book of Haggai, chapter one and verse four. Come on. Is it time for you? O ye to dwell in your sealed houses. Let me read that again. Verse 4. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? No, you had it the first time. It is sealed. It is sealed. 
All right, let me read it. It says, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? What house is Haggai talking about right here? The house of the Lord. Exactly. It's saying, give me that in, um, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nehemiah 4. Give me that in Nehemiah 4. Uh, and verse 17. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 17. Hold on. Wait till the people get it. Read verse 17 and then verse 6. All right. The book of Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 17. Come on. They which builded on the wall and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work. Right in the work. So they're rebuilding the wall after the decree was given. So we had our brothers uh, building the wall. With one hand, they stacking bricks. Read. And with the other hand, held a weapon. Because our adversaries, the heathens, they was coming against us to try to what? Prevent us from building the Lord's house. Now, verse 6. Watch this. Verse 6. Come on. So build we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. Uh-huh. For the people had a mind to work. Right. For the people had a mind to work. Not in our own pleasures, right? But to do the Lord's work. That's the key, brothers and sisters. Now, go back to Haggai, the first chapter. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, on the real quick, uh, on read that in Nehemiah again in 4 and 17. All right, and we got to see how bad our forefathers was, man. All right, man, that's a... <laughs> Hey, man, that's a beautiful verse right there. All right, man, they getting attacked, and they working. Uh, they got on the swords on our hands. Come on, man. On, read it again. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 17. They which build it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. On, read on. For the builders, every one had his sword girded by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. Man, come on, man. That's some powerful stuff. All right, man, on we got this school, and on we just put out a message for the brothers, hey, on to come and do the work. Ain't nobody attacking us. Uh, the white man ain't shooting through the windows and stuff like that. It's us in here just working away. How many brothers get tired? Right? I mean, brothers was hungry. I mean, some of y'all started complaining. Uh, but the work on has to get done. All right, man, if these brothers had the mindset, I got a brick here and a weapon here, all right, imagine, man, if ain't nobody was attacking this group. They would have, man, they would have finished that thing in no time. All right, on, we got to take the mindset like that. You know what? All I right. got to say something on that. Because it wasn't about uh, this brother or that brother, it was about what? The nation. That's what it was about. I said this the other day. I forgot who I was talking to, but um, growing up, I just never understood the point of the military. I was like, that's stupid. You're going to go join the military to get killed? But coming into repentance, I'm like, oh, snap. If I die for my nation, that's honorable. You understand? It's a different mindset. It's like, hell no, I ain't going to die for random people. But for this, y'all die for this. You understand? That's how we got to think. It's like, this is my people. This is my nation. It's my God. You understand? So it's a different type of mindset that we have to have. And our forefathers, like David pointed out, that's the type of mindset they had, man. We was building our nation because nobody else is going to build it for us. That's why the scripture said that. And hi, God, are you going to go back home while your brothers is out there doing the work? Why God's house lies waste? Something's wrong with you. You should be, bro, you should be trying to get in here every day. And don't worry. But it, you understand? We got, if we're not going to do it, nobody else is going to do it. I'll tell you that right now. Okay? All right, let's get back to Haggai real quick. No, that's a, that's a good point. That's a good point. Haggai 1 and 4. The book of Haggai, chapter 1 and verse 4. Come on. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lie waste. Uh -huh. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, 
Consider your ways. Do what? Consider your ways. Right. A lot of us, we want to get out of what financial burdens. Uh, we want things to go better, whether it be getting a husband or a wife. Uh, we want our lives to change for the better. But then when you really do some digging and really examine the, uh, the work that you're putting forth, is it worthy of what you desire? You have to ask yourself that on the daily. You understand? Give me that in uh, the book of Tobit. Because it ain't just about the brothers. All right? Give me that in Tobit chapter 2. Uh, let, me, let me look at it. I'm sorry. Uh, Tobit chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Watch this. The book of Tobit chapter 2 and verse 10. Watch this. And I knew not that there were sparrows in the wall. All right. Sparrows is what? It's a bird, right? Okay. This is the forefather Tobit. Read it again. And I knew not that there were sparrows in the wall. Uh -huh. And mine eyes being open, the sparrows muted warm dung into mine eyes. Right. So y'all know who's at Tabernacles last, last week, right? Yeah. At my campsite, we was grilling a lot. But hey, after a while, you know, you had the birds flying over. And we had to take cover because we understand that to be dropping stuff from the sky. But that's what happened to our forefather. Watch what happened as a result of that. Read. And the whiteness came in mine eyes. Uh-huh. And I went to the physician. So he went to the doctor's office. Come on. But they helped me not. But they weren't able to help him. Read. Moreover, Achirias did nourish me until I went into Elimus. So what actually happened... Tobit became blind for many years. Tobit became blind for many years and was not able to do the work he was doing before. So watch what happens in verse 11. Verse 11. Come on. And my wife, Anna, uh -huh. did take women's work to do. You see that? The sister knew that her Lord could no longer do what he used to do. He's not going to be... Easily accessible, he's not going to be able to think about everything because he can't see. He doesn't have the same strength. He doesn't have the same mind. So the sister, she didn't pout. She just said, you know what? I'm going to take women's work to do. Same thing with the school. Same thing in our, in our lives. You understand? Whatever is brought to you, you got to take it what? Cheerfully. And you have to find a way to make up for what's lacking. So now let's go back to Haggai real quick, okay? This question was about servile work, but it happens. It happens, right? All right, verse 5, Haggai 1 and 5. The book of Haggai, chapter 1 and verse 5. Come on. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Read. consider your ways. Read on. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Uh -huh. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Right, we sow much in what? In worldly things. Your own pleasures, your own ways. That's what it's saying right there. You'll sow a lot in Esau's world, but you're not going to receive the things of the Lord. Because guess what? You've really got to analyze it. Am I putting more work? And what does it say in Sirach 37? Uh, maintaining the state of this world. You understand? Am I putting more work in Esau's kingdom? Or am I, or am I trying to build up my nation? God's military. Okay? Read verse 6 again. Verse 6. Ye have sown much. And bring in little. Uh -huh. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Read. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Uh -huh. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. That means what? That's the most high just plaguing you. The most high is plaguing you. You work in a nine to five, you work in overtime, but you always broke. You're not able to sustain. Because your dreams and your hopes is in the white man, not God. Seven and eight. Come on. Verse seven. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Verse, go up unto the mountain and bring wood and build the houses. And do what? And build the houses. Uh-huh. And I will take pleasure in it. Do y'all see that? Mosai is telling us to do the work of the Lord. Build his house and he's going to take pleasure in it. Not our pleasure, but that's going to be the Lord's pleasure. I hope y'all see that thing right there. Give me that in um, Ephesians, the second chapter. Watch this. Give me Ephesians 2. 
Ephesians 2. Let me look at it. Ephesians chapter 2, maybe it's not 2. Maybe it's, no, no, Philippians. Is it Philippians? I think it's Philippians 2. Yes. Give me Philippians chapter 2 and verse 25 unto 27. Okay, 25 down to 27. The book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 25. Watch this. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor uh -huh. and fellow soldier. Come on. But your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. Watch this. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. Uh huh. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. Read. But God had mercy on him. Why did God have mercy on him? It's not because he was sick unto death doing his own thing. God had mercy on um, Epaphroditus because why? He was occupied in the work to the point where he almost died. That's pleasurable to God. Yeah, I hope y'all see that thing. I hope y'all see that. Let's go back to Matthew 12. Matthew 12. So I'm going to keep going. Uh, Matthew 12. And what verse are we at? Verse 4. Verse 4. All right, read that. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 4. Come on. How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat. You see, normally it's not lawful for you to do those things, but certain circumstances occur where you would have to do it. So to answer the question, it says, what is sort of our work that's working for wages? And can we clean house chores and organize on the Sabbath? Hey, if... That situation arises, like the trash can situation, hey, take it out. But if nobody's coming to your house, hey, just lock the door, go keep the Sabbath, clean it up when you get home that night. Subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.